Hello, Augies Worldwide. I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, here with another episode of Ask Dave. I've actually had this question from several people wanting to know how they can practice iambic keying. Now, a normal code practice oscillator, you push the key down, you get a tone, you let it up, you don't. But if you connect paddles to that, you get a tone whenever you press one side, you get a tone maybe on the other, and it's like, well, that's not helping me. Fortunately, nearly all radios today, you can set up, so for example, you can turn them down to zero power and then connect the output to a dummy load so that you don't have a problem with transmitting on the air. And you can sit there and practice your, with a paddle all day long. But some radios don't have that capability or, for example, suppose you're working with a QRP rig or something like that that does not have a built-in keyer. Now, a Morse code key that's the up and down type, which is like this right here. Now, this is an MFJ1 or you can also get it from cwmorse.us, not .com. Dot US. And it's a cute little thing. It's 3D printed. I find this one a very nice one. I've talked with the people at CW Morse. They're great people. So anyway, down makes a sound, up nothing. Okay. Now, the problem with this for some people is that they'd like to go a little faster. If you're really good, you max out about 15 words a minute on this. Really, really good. People have sent a lot faster, but after a while, you want to use paddles. Now, these paddles are from the same company, cwmorse.us. Got a nice little place to plug in a uh, cord right there. The one without the screw in it is the top. If you put it this way, it's upside down. So what happens here is when you press on this one, you get DAWs. If you press on this one, you get DITs. Now, it's called an iambic keyer because if you hold the two together, you get da 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 which is iambic pentameter. Okay, so you get this thing, it sounds like poetry and iambic meter. Da 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 da. How to practice with that? You need to do a little practicing before you try getting on the air, because if you practice this right on the air, I can guarantee you it takes some getting used to. So we're going to step back kind of a generation in technology. Whenever you had paddles, you also had a keyer. Now the keyer has electronics in it. So when you press the da button, you get da, 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 da. When you press the dit button, you get dit, 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 dit. And it will give you that so that you can key. Let me show you how this one goes together. Now like so many things in ham radio today, it's five volts. And more and more is getting that. This is not your classic USB-C. It's an older type USB cable. And then this goes to whatever source of 5 volts you happen to have. And it gives did it did it did it which is HI. Saying hi. Okay. Now it's got all the instructions on the top, all the instructions on the back. This is an open design that was released several years ago. And this keyer comes from China. And it's apparently sold directly out of China because it took nearly four weeks to get here. Now what you do with your paddles is you connect them to the back of this thing with a stereo type cord, okay? It's got to be stereo, and it goes into the back where it says paddle. Now this is actually a keyer. You could connect this to the CW input to your QRP radio or whatever you may have, and it will actually key the radio for you. Now, the little thing takes a little bit of setup. See the commands? To get into the command mode, you press the command set button and that's what you get and when you're done 
it goes up a little bit, okay? Now, there is an iambic A mode, an iambic B mode, and a switch to automatic mode. The one you want is B, okay? Now, in order to set it to that, you have to push the set button and do a B. And then you get an extra did at the end, and then you get out of that. Okay, now it's in B mode. There's a subtle difference between A and B, and it can, can really throw you for loop. Now it will act, but note here, you can change the speed with the knob here. So you can set it for whatever speed you want. That will also affect it if you're using this as a keyer, okay? So, now the way this works, look real closely here. Da, 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 da. da, 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 da. But now what happens if you squeeze the keys together? So if I wanted to, I could hold this in for DAWs. And notice I'm holding it. While I'm holding it, I hit this other one, it'll throw a dit in there. So if I were to call CQ, Now, notice how easy it was to send that. Notice also that there's no up and down motion. It's just side to side. And you can let this thing slide all you want, although I'd kind of keep a hand on that or mount it to some sort of a base. Now, once you get good enough with it, you're going to want to get your speed up to about 15 words a minute and get your code receiving skills up to about 15 words per minute before you put this on the air. Now, one thing this does is it completely destroys the operator's so-called fist. With the key like this, you are shaping both the dots and the dashes. When I'm doing Hansent Morse code, I tend to send the DAWs quite a bit longer than the DITs rather than just three times. This forces you to send perfect code. See, that can be machine read, whereas my Morse code is a little hard to do that. Now let's look at some of the other things here. You can increase the speed by using the set and the paddles. This thing being a, a good keyer has some memories. So you can put into memory one or memory two something like a full CQ and then you just push that button and it'll uh, do it again. Now, I, again, I recommend mode B. The side tone frequency is that frequency that you hear there, okay? Transmit, enable, disable if you want. Dotted it ratio adjust, you can adjust it. If you do that, I'd make the DAW a little bit longer, just a little bit. Toggle paddle reverse, you can, if you want, you're left-handed or something, you may find it easier to flip the thing over or toggle paddle reverse. Okay, now we also have the toggle side tone on and off. This is the side tone. If your radio makes a side tone also, you don't need two of them. Okay, and the radio usually makes a better one anyway. Okay, program a memory. It's P number, it would be P1 or P2. And then you can put a message in it and hit set when you're done, okay? Tune mode just leaves the thing on so that your radio stays in transmit and you can tune it up. Uh, normally on a, a, a modern radio like this one right here, you would just hit the, the tune button and hold that down and it tunes itself, see? But you sometimes want to do that yourself. You can make this potentiometer active or inactive. I like it active, it's easier. You can change the speed with W, but it's easier to do this. 
Okay, exit command mode, da, 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 or you can press the set button again. Z is auto space on and off. Auto space ensures, see, I can go, and you get, as soon as you hit that paddle, it will make a noise. And it is possible for fast sunders to send too fast, and they're using up part of the space time. So what the auto space does is it forces the proper space after a character. Okay, so if we were to use this uh, to key the radio, the radio is set on CW. Okay, and we'll get away from the digital stuff. Okay, now... Turn this up. And you can see over here on the power. Okay, there you go. So this is an example of using the keyer to key this rig because the rig thinks it's talking to an ordinary key. This is the keyer, and we'll put a link for this below. It's called OpenCW Keyer, which is the name, and the Mark II kit with metal case. It is a metal case on the thing. This one right here is a circuit board case. Um, and the speed is adjustable for the thing, and it is assembled. You don't have to build the kit. Okay, $30 which is okay for a code practice oscillator and one that will work with a uh, set of paddles. Okay, now I purchased this on August 2nd. It took until August 24th to get here, so that's 22 days. So it took a while, so be patient. Uh, like I said, unless you, it used to be keyer kits were very common. They're not anymore. They used to be, things you could pick up from Vectronix or something like that or down at Radio Shack. And if you had a keyer kit, it could operate as a code practice oscillator for, for this right here. So there you have it for all of you who have been asking, how can I practice iambic keying without getting on the air? Now, a word to the wise. In theory, somebody who is sending Morse code to you will send it to you at the same speed you're sending it out. That is not always the case because some people are sometimes using keyboards to send CW. And so they can go fast and it, it is harder for them to slow down. I would say when you're up to about 15 words a minute with a regular key, you are ready to go with the paddles. Paddles are usually used for, uh, we, you will very quickly get well into the 20s uh, with that. Now, I will tell you it is very easy to learn to send, and you will learn to send much faster than you will learn to receive. One thing you can do that will help, if you have a tape recorder and your, your uh, phone has a recorder, an audio recorder on it, sit down and send a bunch of text with your paddles backwards. Not individual notes backwards, but let's say you take, this says San Ramon Marriott, okay? Well, start with the T, T-T-O-I-R-R-A-M, that's backwards for Marriott, N-O-M-A-R, okay? So you're sending the text backwards. It's almost impossible to memorize that. Okay, so now you've got a good practice tape that you can listen to. Get your speed up, get your speed up. When you get up to about 15, get on the air. Now you should already be on the air with your straight key, right? Okay, so this will give you a good cutover opportunity because believe me, CW people use paddles, not keys. It's rare to use a straight key, okay? There you have it. I hope that really answers your question. And until we next meet, 73.